Hello world, in this video, I'm gonna be going over all of the things that you need to know before you start NaNoWriMo. This is gonna be your ultimate Preptober guide. Whether you're a pantser, plotter, or anything in between, this is gonna be all the information that you need to get started and to make NaNoWriMo go as smooth as possible. If you can use all the info in this video, you will finish your draft in 30 days or less. On this channel, we cover all things writing and screenwriting. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss this video. I make sure to give tangible advice that you can use right away to improve your writing. I'm gonna set this video up as a continuous reference guide so that way you can watch it all the way through the first time, but then you can come back and skip to the chapter markers that I put below for the parts that are relevant to you. A lot of the information is going to be based on structure, but I promise all you pantsers out there and people who like to write as they go, I'm going to have some key information at the end of the video so that way you can get through this too. The first one is optional, but it definitely helps a lot of people, and that's going to be free writing. See, if you free write a lot of the things that come to your mind with your story ideas and scenes that pop in your head that you might think are cool, you can just write those down, but you want to set a time limit or a date where you stop doing that process, where you stop just generating all the ideas that are gonna be in your story and you start actually constructing the scaffolding that your story is gonna stand on. So before you start NaNoWriMo, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a story idea. And if you don't have one, here are five tips. If you already have one, you should probably watch this because it might help you really narrow down what it is about your story that's keeping you interested. And they're just nice techniques to have along your writing journey. The first one is flip the premise. You basically can take the antagonist and make them the good guy, make them sympathetic. You're seeing a lot of versions of this in the industry, things like Maleficent or the trilogy of Star Wars with Anakin Skywalker, or you can do a gender swap, like in He's All That, the former property being She's All That. You can take a story that you like and switch around the pieces and then you will have something new. The second technique that you can use to generate ideas is simply taking a story that you like already and transporting it into a different genre. This may seem kind of weird, but I'll give you an example. So if you have Finding Nemo, for instance, you have the story of a father looking for his child and he goes on this journey lots of scary things along the way the child is abducted that's why the father has to look for him well this is the same plot of taken but you never would think of taking and finding nemo as being the same base story so if there's a story that you already like you can kind of take out that skeleton put it in a different genre and you're going to have a different story the third technique you can use to generate ideas is basically asking what if you can say what if for almost anything what if Cinderella was actually a bully? What if Cinderella was a time traveler? Asking what if to anything that pops in your head story-wise can take you down a rabbit hole that will give you a unique idea. Another technique that you can use is just think about the first person or the last person to do something. This could be the last person to send a handwritten letter. This could be the first person to travel through time. When you think about the first or the last person to do something, it's definitely gonna give you a good story idea. A fifth way to generate story ideas could be simply taking two ideas, matching them together. An example could be The Bachelorette meets Twilight. What does it look like if all of the contestants on The Bachelorette are paranormal creatures. Another example could be something like Frozen meets John Wick. What would happen if Elsa went on a vengeful rampage? That would probably be horrifying actually. Now that you have your story idea, we're gonna decide on the main question of act two. You wanna make act two revolve around a question that has a yes or no answer. You don't want it to be gray area. Will Katniss survive the Hunger Games? Is Neo the one? Questions like that will drive the events in your story and bring us to our next step. A lot of people get hung up writing character bios with very intense questions about what their character wears, where they live. You don't necessarily need the full character bio, especially when you first start, but something that will definitely help you is knowing your character's motivation. You need to know why they get out of bed every day. You need to know what they would die for. It really helps if you know 
what would make the character change? And for this particular character, what is the worst thing that can happen to them? Because that's exactly what you want to put in your story. If you answer those questions about character and not focus on the details at this part of the story, then you're going to have a very strong footing to stand on. Now that you know the character and the general idea, you're going to want to pick a tense and a POV that can help you best tell the story. I recommend first or third person, past or present tense. Future tense and second person tend to be a little bit harder. And most of the stories that we see are told in first or third person, past or present tense. So you have more experience consuming that type of content. So it'll be more natural for you to use those. A tip, if you have a lot of internal dialogue for your main character, maybe it's a genre like romance, then you might want to use first person to get those thoughts to the reader. Otherwise, you're most likely going to have to have a sounding board character to whom they're divulging all of their thoughts to. And that can be kind of clunky, which is one of the main reasons we see so many stories told from first person to really get across that internal conflict. OK, so if you're a pantser or a plotter, this next part is really going to help you out. You want to think of the five main story points. That's going to be your inciting incident, which is the event that kicks your story off and makes things change from the regular life they had before to the new adventure that they're about to embark on. You want to know what happens at the end of Act 1, which is kind of like going through a door into the new world. You can think of Frodo leaving the Shire. In a lot of romances that have forced proximity, this might be the beginning of them being stuck the two love interests is being stuck in the same place. You definitely want to know your midpoint, which works really well if you can deliver new information to the viewer and the character. It can be a very high point or a low point. Those work very well. And you want to know what happens at the end of Act 2. At the end of Act 2 is where we're going to get the answer to that story question that we talked about earlier. And finally, you want to know what happens in the climax, whether or not our hero succeeds at getting what they desire. One of the things that can take a while in the writing process is describing your locations and the places you want your characters to go through. What I recommend is that while you're prepping your story, you make a list of at least 20 places that you think it would be cool for your character to go through or to be at. This could be something as simple as their home. Maybe it's a trailer. Maybe it's a mansion. Maybe the character's going to go to Antarctica. Maybe they live in a small town. And write a few words that stand out about this small town and the other locations that you might use in your story. Don't just describe them as a small town that we would know. Describe them as a small town that we would know, but include at least one specific detail. That one specific detail will really ground your location and make us really feel it as your characters go through it. For all of these previous steps that I talked about, you can definitely use flashcards or paper and pen writing longhand. Some people use whiteboards. Usually I just use a general word doc because I like to copy, paste, and slide the things around on the document. There are also programs like Scribner. Whatever you use, you want to make sure you have the materials or the apps before you get started and make sure that you're familiar with them so that way when you're writing, you can just write. Right around this time, if you're an outliner, I recommend using a story structure. You can use something like the hero's journey, save the cat, the seven sentence story structure, the snowflake method. There's the 27 chapter outline. There's also Dan Harmon's story circle. There's a lot of story structures out there. I've used a lot of them. The main thing that all of them have in common is they help you devise a roadmap for where you want to go. But if you're a pantser, I recommend you definitely have those five important story beats that we talked about earlier. The biggest thing with story structure, whether you're a pantser or an outliner, is that you remember it's about cause and effect. Whatever your characters are doing, it's going to affect them. You want to show us how it affects them and you want to show us their next steps into getting what they want. If you remember cause and effect and you're honest about what your characters want at all times, then you can't really go wrong. OK, so now we're going to go over some habits that are good to have to push you through that first draft. So that way you can finish in less than 30 days. 
Before you get started, you definitely want to check your schedule and see how much time you have to realistically write. I recommend budgeting a 20% cushion with whatever you calculate because you never know what life might throw at you. Then you want to calculate how many narrative words you can write per hour. That's not to be confused with how much words you can write per minute over the course of an hour. Generally, new writers can write between 500 to 800 words an hour. If you're writing more than 1,000 words an hour, then you're doing really well. A good technique to employ is using sprints. The idea of writing sprints is just writing in short bursts. These could be as short as five minutes if that's all you have to I would say about up to 30 minutes. Anything longer than 30 minutes is starting to get into more of the endurance category and you're not really sprinting. You don't have to sprint, but sprints work really well if you're on a tight schedule. Often when I'm writing, I'll schedule several sprints throughout the day and it helps me stay focused and get the work done in that short window of time. Another habit that's good to get your draft done is writing every single day. Writing 30 minutes for five days a week is going to be much better than cramming it into two and a half hours on one of your weekend days. That's because for those shorter periods of time, you're going to be able to focus better. And in a longer chunk of time, you're going to want to take breaks. And even if you don't take breaks, you might slow down. A good habit to have is writing even when you don't feel inspired, forcing yourself to just do the words. Don't worry if you think that it's not going to be good. NaNoWriMo and finishing your first draft is all about getting the work done. That way you have something to fix later. If you don't get the words down, then you won't have any words to fix later. The more often you do this, you're going to be able to get into a flow state where you won't even notice that time is passing and the words will start to feel like they're writing themselves. And one of the ways to make sure that you can get there is by not slowing down to edit, to research, or to look up finer details that are back in your draft. If you forgot a character's name, just use a placeholder. You can say protagonist or hero, best friend, janitor. Just any word that describes that character will be good, will be better to use in the moment rather than taking the time to go back and look it up. If there's something story-wise that you wanna make a note of, just make the note in the draft and keep moving. You can use symbols like stars or dashes to make sure it stands out or even bold or underline the words. Whatever you do, you want to just keep going. Another good thing to keep in mind is that your writing time should be sacred. Social media is not your friend at this moment. There are programs you can use to turn your phone or internet connection off. You definitely want to turn those notifications off. Whatever you can do to stay disciplined to use your writing time for just writing. And I promised the pantsers some key ideas that will help them get through, so here they are. But if you're an outliner, you wanna listen up because these will help you also. One of the things you can do is pre-outline each scene. So that means if you write a scene and you know that you're gonna have to stop at a certain place, just write a few notes about what's gonna happen next. This could just be a few sentences. While you're writing, you're already thinking about what's going to happen next. So just put a note to yourself. So now when you come back, so next time when you come back to write, you already know where you're going and you can just start from there. Another tip is don't be afraid to stop mid scene. If you stop mid scene, it will allow you to dive right back into the story on your next writing session. A lot of times when we stop at the end of a scene, it takes a while for us to ramp up into the next scene that we're gonna write. We have to describe the location and set the mood. You can skip right over that if at the end of your session, you stop mid scene. And another thing that's really helpful is that if you use your downtime or your away time from writing to think about the scenes and the next events that are going to occur. Even if you have an outline, it's very helpful to think about the exact words that you're going to write when you're away from your writing time. That way, when you dive back into work, you know exactly how the words are going to be laid on the page. Let me know in the comment section below if you feel like I missed anything on your pre-writing journey. And if you have any questions about the things that I explained in the video, leave a comment below. I'll make sure to get back to you and I might even make a whole video explaining that topic for you. If you want to learn more about the writing process, click one of the videos on screen that make the most sense to you.